So once you know all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, there's some ways we can use that information to solve. And this is an important video because what I want to do is go over three examples that show up time and time and time again, not just only in geometry class, but in later math classes. So it's really important for you to recognize not that just all the angles add up to 180 degrees, which is the triangle angle sum theorem, but how can we use that to solve for X? How can we use that to solve some problems? Now in these examples, what I'm going to do is just focus on kind of solving for X. We'll get into more applications for this later. But for right now, I just want to use, all right, we know all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. It doesn't matter what type of triangle we're talking about. All triangles have their interior angles add up to 180 degrees. How can we use that? Now, in this first example, you can see that we have two angles and then we have a third angle, which we need to go ahead and solve for. Now, one of the main things that, you know, students can repeat all the angles add up to 180 degrees. But again, if we have a variable X, the best thing to do is create an equation. So therefore that we can go ahead and solve. So basically what we've been saying is 88 degrees plus 91 degrees degrees plus X is equal to 180 degrees. Okay. So how do we go ahead and solve this? Well, again, we could go ahead and combine these or a lot of times what I just like to say, you know, sometimes we don't even get to this point. Once you get some experience on doing problems like this, especially maybe at like the end of the year or in a different class, when you've done this over and over and over again, we can actually just jump exactly into this. X is equal to 180 degrees minus a 91 degrees minus an 88 degrees. Because basically what I did was I subtracted an 88 on both sides and I subtracted a 91 on both sides, right? Remember, inverse operations. Well, maybe some people don't remember the inverse operation. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. So basically what I did was I subtracted a 91 degrees on both sides and I subtracted an 88 degrees on both sides, right? Because you got to make sure you isolate the X. When I go ahead and do that, I get X is equal to a one degree. Now again, this is a pretty small symmetry problem angle. Now I just randomly drew up the triangle, but again, it's really important to either recognize that you either write this relationship like this, or you can go directly into this relationship. And then you just go ahead and solve for X and you're good. Now in the next example, we have no idea what any of the angles are. But again, our main goal in this point is just to go ahead and solve for X. So we got to look at the relationship. Like these angles have to be related to each other somehow. How are they related? How are they related? Oh yeah. All the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. The triangle angle sum theorem. Now in this case, we don't know any of the angles. So again, I'm just going to write up this relationship. Typically when I first write the relationship or when I'm first having students first do this, I'll just go ahead and have them use them as parentheses just so that they can see that they're writing the equation correctly. So in this example, I'll have a 8x minus 11 plus a 15x, put those again in parentheses, plus a 3x plus 9. Again, in parentheses, and that's going to equal 180 degrees. Now, again, we don't really need the parentheses, but I just want you to recognize here, like if I was to label these A, B, and C, right? Notice how I have A, B, and C, right? I just want to make sure you're keeping everything organized. But again, the parentheses are only just grouping our angles together. They're not for any other reason for like operations or anything like that. What we can do now, I can just go ahead and reorganize these. I'll put the variables with the variables and the numbers with the numbers. Just make sure you carry along the signs. Notice this is a positive nine and that's in a negative 11. So now I just kind of rearranged everything. It just makes life a little bit easier. And now I can go ahead and combine this. So 8x plus 15x is a 23x plus a 3x is going to be a 26x. Negative 11 plus 9 is going to be a minus 2 equals 180 degrees. And now what we have is basically a two-step equation. So I can go ahead and add a 2 to both sides. And I get a 26x equals a 182 degrees. Then divide by 26, divide by 26. Um, that's going to be 52 times 2. And therefore, x is going to equal a 7 degrees. Now again, we just wanted to solve for x. But again, if you wanted to, go ahead and find the measure of each of these angles. You could just replace X in either one of these angles with seven degrees and then go ahead and evaluate. But again, I'm just trying to keep this video straightforward. So we're not going to go and do that. Okay. So now let's go and take a look at this last example. And you might be looking at this and saying, Hey, there's an exterior angle. What are we doing with exterior angles? And how does that relate to the interior angle sum theorem, which again says all the angles in triangle add up to one. 80 degrees. Well, this problem is actually very common. And again, yeah, it relates to our interior angle. So having an exterior angle is actually going to relate to our interior angle sum theorem. To basically understand when we have an exterior angle, we have to understand the interior angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to say, let's just go and pretend this angle is Z. And again, let's use the information that we do know, right? That all the angles in a triangle add up 180 degrees to write the relationship for this triangle. Now let's go and take a look at the relationship between the interior and this exterior angle, right? Z and 7x plus 12. Now notice that these are adjacent angles, right? They share a vertex, they share a side, which are adjacent, and they make up a line. So therefore they are a linear pair as well as supplementary, meaning that these two angles add up to 180 degrees. So I can go ahead and write that relationship. 
there's a couple of different ways we could go ahead and solve this because basically we have two equations with two variables. So we could use our understanding of systems of equations to solve this, but I don't want to go back to a heavy algebraic method to do this. Since they're both equal to 180 degrees, you could set both equations equal to each other. Another way to look at this is these two angles, right? Plus Z equals 180. This angle plus Z equals 180. So if both of these angles plus Z are equal to 180, then those two angles are going to be equal to each other. So therefore I can just write the statement of 30 degrees plus X is equal to a seven X plus 12. And again, our goal in this problem is to go ahead and solve for X. I just created Z so I could understand the relationship between the angles. And this is actually a relationship, which we call the exterior angle theorem, which basically just states that any exterior angle is equal to the sum of your two non-adjacent sides, right? Because the adjacent side, it's going to be supplementary with. All right, now I have an equation with the variable on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract an X on both sides and I get a 30 degrees is equal to a six X plus 12. Now to go ahead and solve for X, I will just go ahead and subtract a 12 on both sides. Therefore, I'm going to get a 18 degrees is equal to a six X divide by six and X is going to equal a three degrees. Now, again, if you needed to find the value of this exterior angle, you could definitely go ahead and plug it in. But again, my whole point in this video was just to go ahead and find the value of X. Now, if you want any more examples of solving for X using the interior angle, sum theorem or the exterior angle, sum theorem, then go and check out the playlist I have for you down below or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.